So how, how do you get people excited about telling stories? Because we're afraid of telling a story. We're ashamed that we're going to board someone or they're not going to care. Or sometimes we're telling a story to someone that doesn't care and they just turn around. So how do you convince people to tell stories no matter what? Yeah, I'll answer the why question first and I'll tell you the how as well. So the why, why people don't tell stories I have found is we think our stories don't matter. So we'll say something like salsa dancing lessons, big deal. Or they think their life is boring. They think, oh, well, I'm not a, I don't know. I've got, we have three teenage boys. So I watch what they watch on YouTube and they're watching, you know, Mr. Beast videos and he's flying around the world, staying in nice hotels and living this crazy influencer kind of life. And so you watch that and go, well, my stories don't matter. I don't do that. And I'm the ultimate dad, work from home, live in the basement, work in the basement. I live, I live upstairs. My wife lets me sleep in the big bed, lived in the same house for a long time. My oldest kid is 17. We've lived in this house for 18 years. And I'm just this kind of boring cul-de-sac pickup truck, Colorado, American guy. I don't have this fancy life. We're not jet setters. I don't have six packs ab, six pack abs or my own line of cologne. I don't own an exotic pet. I'm just a normal guy. So people get precious about their stories and say, oh, I need to have something really powerful. I need to have a, a near death experience story to tell or an exotic travel story or a lavish vacation I took. Wrong. You're telling stories. My, my main go-to, Daniel, is something that happened to me yesterday. I've already done it with you several times. What was the most impactful part of my day yesterday? And so I start to think back and go, well, my middle kid, Luke, he's 15. He wants to go work out. Yesterday, he asked if I would go to the gym with him and show him how to use the machines. That happened yesterday. So my kid's first workout. Is that story worthy? Yeah, I can make a story about that, about doing something for the first time. And you know, like you said, I'm spending time with my kid implies I'm, my kids are important. Uh, there's a neighborhood community gym. It's kind of like an apartment gym. It's not a big gym. It's like a hotel gym. But I did that yesterday. That happened. But last night, we went to my dad's house. It's Memorial Day here in the holiday and in the US. And we had some burgers. Is that story worthy? I could probably weave a story around that. And I told you about the DM conversation about a person who was getting a bad, the bad end of a deal with a vendor. So I just think back, well, what happened yesterday that people can, it can help them move forward? That's my go-to for stories. So people don't tell stories for a few reasons. They think their life's not interesting enough. So they get precious about their storytelling and say, I need to have some epic story to tell, like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or Star Wars. I need this epic story. No, you don't. And they also think that their stories don't matter. And I, I'm telling you, anybody, you should try this today. If you're having a conversation with anybody, pause for a minute and say, can I tell you a story? And they will always say yes. I've never said that. And nobody, somebody said, nah, I don't care about stories. If can I tell you a story is a really powerful intro to a story, then you just tell them a story. So that's why people don't tell stories. And I'll share the how with you in a minute. But is that, does that make sense, Daniel, and why people well, don't do it? Very simple and a lot of sense. Yeah. So here's right. how I do it. Yeah. I was, I was bad at English and like language arts as a kid. I was really good at math, but I was really bad at English. And so I had to look this up recently. It turned my, I was hosting a storytelling event a few months ago. I'm doing it again soon. So I had to remember what, what is in a story, it, like in English class or, you know, or language arts class when we were in primary school or elementary school. How do you tell a story? And I forgot what they are, but you know, stories have characters and time and place and tension and stakes. And so I tried, to, I tried to do that. So the earlier story about salsa dancing, I said it was last summer, so I gave you some time. I was with my wife. So you knew who else I was with. I didn't tell you this, but it was a private, I bought it off a of Groupon or Living Social, one of those deals websites. And we signed up for two sample lessons and they were private. So I was in a studio with a teacher, it was me and my wife. So you can kind of picture that, okay, dance studio. I know what that looks like. It's Cody and his wife. I don't know what she looks like, but, uh, and then there's this dance teacher. Eventually I got the suede bottom shoes. So now you're picturing like, all right, I was dressed like this, like a flannel, you know, jeans and suede bottom dance shoes, which is kind of funny. And so that's who I was, that's the place. So time, character, location, last summer at a dance studio with my wife and a private instructor. Got that picture. Of that. What was going on? Why were we doing that? Well, like you said, I was trying to get closer to my wife. I was trying to surprise her. It was very, been married forever. So I've been married 21 years. So you look for stuff to keep the, the flame alive. And so I thought this will really surprise her. I surprised her with those dance lessons. We were going on a date night and I, she knew dinner reservations were at seven, but I said, we're going to go get drinks at five, which was a lie. We had a dance lesson at five. So I got her dressed up. She looked great. I didn't know what shoes she should wear. So I threw a bunch, I snuck a bunch of her shoes into the backseat of my truck just so she would have comfortable shoes because I was surprising her with dance lessons. And, and we did that. So what was at stake? Like I wasn't trying to save my marriage, but what was at stake was trying to deepen a relationship and connection with my wife. And I'll stop there, but that's like time, location, characters, who was there? What were you wearing? Why did that matter? And you can do that with anything. Lifting weights with my middle kid, Luke, yesterday. 
the, the hotel gym looks like a hotel gym. You can kind of picture a hotel gym. My son's 15. You can picture a 15 year old. And we're, I'm showing him how to use the equipment. We walked down to the community center. It's a 0.8 mile walk. You kind of picture that stuff. What were you doing? Why did that matter? I want to spend time with my kid. I want him to get better at something. Okay. Why are you telling me this? Well, because remember when you did anything for the first time, your first ever landing page, your first ever email, your first ever podcast, your first ever webinar, your first ever sales call, your first ever client meeting probably wasn't very good. Kind of like my 15 year old in the gym yesterday wasn't very good either. So that's the story, the lesson, the application is move forward, get better, don't give up. And the call to action is, is kind of that, you know, keep going, don't give up. Like, so that's the slack method story, me and Luke lesson, things are hard when you start application, don't give up call to action, you know, keep moving forward. That's how you do it. That could be an email, a reel, a podcast, a YouTube video. And I could tie it back to, you know, my business. I help people build a laid back online business powered by storytelling, preferably in my world by email, but do it however you want. That's, that's that in full display. So stories don't have to be precious. And that's how you tell stories.